Hey guys, D-Pad Danny back again, and today we're going to be looking at a game based on a beloved children's cartoon that I myself was a big fan of when I was younger. I'm talking about DuckTales. DuckTales debuted on TV in 1987. This was the first cartoon Disney produced for syndication, and it's one of the good ones. So good, in fact, that it got its own full-length feature film in 1990. The show followed the treasure-hunting adventures of the extremely wealthy Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, that guy, but he's not quite as crotchety now. Scrooge is often accompanied by his nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Donald is his nephew, too. It's all very scientific. Eventually, the show would see a comeback in the form of the 2017 reboot series, where Scrooge McDuck is voiced by David Tennant. The Doctor is in! Anyway, Capcom teamed up with Disney to bring us some pretty solid games on the NES, but this is probably the most well-known of the bunch. Let's take a look. It's a big world, and Scrooge McDuck is out to find all its rarest treasures. This game is a platformer, as you might suspect. Scrooge can walk and jump, and that's really it. Other than the mighty Kane Pogo, whose legacy is larger than the game itself! This mechanic is pretty awesome, and you can see some of its inspiration on some newer games, like Shovel Knight and Panzer Paladin. Which is really good, by the way. Seriously, download this one if you have a Switch. Scrooge can also use his cane to smack certain blocks and rocks around. You can use these blocks and rocks to defeat enemies, but a lot of times it's just more fun to bounce on them. There's various enemies in each of the five stages, which are all far-reached areas around the globe, like the rainforests of the Amazon, the Himalayan mountains, the moon. the moon? Dude, he doesn't even wear a spacesuit! Is this guy related to Howard the Duck or something? The moon, huh? I guess I thought there'd be more whales. Like I said, there's different enemies in each area, and we're gonna go through each one individually. You can do these in any order you like, but I do them in the order they appear. The first stop on our whirlwind adventure is the mighty Amazon, where we shall observe the majestic gorilla and study various insects and arachnids. From there, we will examine the stoic Dracula Duck Manor in the heart of Transylvania. Some say the walls are lively with the sounds of the recently departed. Next, a deep plummet into the expansive African mines, where we are sure to encounter a menagerie of bottom feeders. Afterwards, a brisk trip to the Himalayas to mingle with the local, um, goats. Oh, watch out for that! Finally, we'll explore the previously unexplored, as we attempt to make contact with lunar creatures on the moon's surface. A lot of the side characters from the show made it into the game. Bumbling pilot Launchpad McQuack is here, and he'll help you with his airplane. Also here are the nanny, Mrs. Beakley, Bubba the prehistoric cave duck, and even Gizmo Duck. There's also some of the bad guys from the series. The Beagle Boys are always up to no good, and the evil Magicka Dispel is here as well. I have a problem with this part, but I'll go into that in a little bit. There are hidden treasures and secrets all throughout the world. I'm not sure who left these diamonds just laying around, but hey, I'm not complaining. There's these little Scrooge dolls that give you an extra life, and cakes and ice cream that replenish your health. You can also find a special rare treasure in each level that's worth big bucks, and these things. Not sure what they are, but they increase your maximum health by one. It's fun searching around all the different areas looking for hidden spots. Don't dilly-dally too much, though, there is a time limit. Some of the stages have you do things that seem out of the way. As soon as you reach the African mine, you find that it's locked, and you need to go to Transylvania to get the key. Similarly, on the moon, you need to get the key to the UFO so you can get the remote control so you can get Gizmo Duck to break the wall at the end of the stage. These things don't take too long, but it just seems unnecessary, like they were going out of their way to try to pad the game, which I guess makes sense because it's not a long playthrough by any means. Especially if you do stuff like letting one of these androids follow you so you can take damage and just clip through the floor. No big deal. Each stage has a boss befitting the theme of the stage itself. The Amazon has an ancient statue, the Himalayas have you fight an abominable snow beast, you fight King Slime from one of the episodes in the African Mine, an evil rat on the moon, you know, the moon, green cheese, rat, yeah that one is a little silly, and Magicka Dispel in Transylvania. Oh, we're, we're getting to it. Graphically, the game is great to look at, with lots of colors, and no two areas look the same. The soundtrack is classic, and a lot of people say that the Moon theme is one of the best pieces of classic video game music out there. I think it's good, but honestly, I like the Transylvania music better. Yeah, yeah, unpopular opinion. After obtaining all the worldly treasures, your arch-rival and fellow treasure hunter, Flit Heart Glomgold, yeah, that guy's in here too, steals every bit of it and then taunts you to come to Dracula Duck Manor to get it back. So off you go to Transylvania. Again. For the third time. Good thing the music's good. 
When you reach the end, you must face off against Dracula Duck himself. Okay, this is the big issue I have with the game. Why the hell is Dracula Duck not the boss of the regular Transylvania stage? Why is he the final boss? Why is Magicka Dispel, one of the main antagonists from the entire series, not the final boss? It just doesn't, it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. I just, <sighs> Sorry about that. After you beat Dracula Duck, Glomgold shows up and challenges you to a race to the top of the castle, where he just left all those treasures. Seriously, he just plopped them down like, eh, they'll be fine. Magicka can only carry him so fast in her bird form, so you easily get there first. And with that, Scrooge McDuck continues to remain the richest duck in the world. Hooray for Scrooge! All in all, DuckTales for the NES is one of the classic greats. It's fun, it's not too difficult, and it takes such a short amount of time to beat that many people find themselves playing through this one frequently. Like myself. I do that. WayForward even worked with Capcom to release DuckTales Remastered on the PS3, 360, and Wii U, which is the version you're seeing here. This one is also great, and it features the voice talents of the original series cast. And speaking of voice talents, like I said, check out the new DuckTales series. They put together a real dynamite cast for that one. Well guys, that's DuckTales. It's a fun little NES game that I think everyone should play at some point. Anyway guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm D-Pad Danny. I'll catch you next time. Life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg.